Hello everyone. Um, I've never done this type of presentation with this amazing setup, so I was wondering why I didn't hear any microphone from out there, and now I know why. Um, first of all, as always, thanks to the Unity guys and to the organization, because you've been always amazing. Um, I'm here today to just um, debunk some myths and make some hopeful clarity around what you need in order to publish your game on PlayStation. Um, as the presentation says, this story might or might not involve dragons. Um, my name is Pier Maria, technical manager of the developer technology group. Uh, we're based in London and we are um, also based in US and in Japan. Um, so what are we going to cover today? Um, essentially is how to get your games out on PlayStation. Um, I know I'm not going to give you a spoiler as an agenda. Um, it's a great journey, uh, can be long. <laughs> but can also be very rewarding. And if you don't know how to proceed, it can be also scary. But this is why I am here. This is why we are uh, at the booth uh, right outside. So it begins. Um, the level one is obviously the company registration. So in order to uh, even begin the journey, you will need to register your company or yourself with us. URL is, as you can see on the screen, is partner.playstation.com. Um, it's a uh, fairly straightforward process. You will get this. Uh, you need to fill in all the necessary information. Um, and the necessary information are this list. Basically, we will need your name, residence. Um, you will need to provide company documentation. Or if you are a sole trader, we will just ask you the scan of the passport. Um, unfortunately, we still require static IP. Uh, that's because the IP needs to be whitelisted to access our portal. And we also um, would like for you to use an email account that is not gmail.com, but is possibly something related to your domain on your company or your game name, whatever it is. Um, the registration uh, nowadays might take longer than we hoped. Uh, that's because we are um, experiencing high level of traffic. We're working to reduce the turnaround time, so don't get discouraged if you don't hear from us um, immediately, but um, don't let this turn away from the rest of the trip. Registration is obviously free of charge. Um, you can register. And you will also need to accept our global developer and publisher agreement, and that includes an NDA that you will sign with us. After that, and after we will confirm all your login details and whatever comes in your inbox, you will become registered PlayStation developer. So level one is done. Level two is the one that everyone loves, and it's dev kits. Um, <laughs> after uh, getting access to tpr.net, which is our publishing portal, um, you will uh, be able to purchase the development kit or for dev kit for friends. Um, it is a necessary step in order to publish on our platform. Um, purchase system is really quite, again, straightforward. Fill in the order um, and the magic dev kit is going to come in your office. Um, no, they're not horribly expensive. Don't believe people that tell you that they're horribly expensive. They're not. Um, price, price range is similar, I would say even a bit lower than high-end PC. And there are different options available. There might also be a possibility of having a loan kit um, from our business group. This is due to deals that we might have with you or because we discuss with you or because we love you or for whatever other reason. Um, in order to do so, you will need to be in touch with our business side of things and I'll explain to you how. Um, once you will be registered and we step to level three, um, you will also get access to our developer network devnet for friends on devnet you'll be able to find pretty much everything you need for actual development which is sdk trc presentation from conference samples whatever else you have in mind is all there basically devnet is the tech side of things while tpr.net is the publishing and policy side of things um, on devnet you will find us which is support the developer technology group you can raise uh, private support issues, you can post on the public forums that are still not entirely public, but they're more public than a private issue. Um, 
and you can also interact with other developers in such public forums. Um, if you want to discuss with us something that is more specific to your game and you don't want the rest of the development team to read about it, uh, you can also raise private support and that issue will be visible only to you, to us and to your organization if you have one. Um, we can also help uh, with a different um, number of subjects. We start from GPU, CPU optimization, network uh, submission, TRC, policy, whatever else you can think of, we are there. Um, we can provide support on site or via conference call when needed and it's entirely free of charge. Um, this is how DevNet looks like. Unfortunately, it's covered by NDA, so I can't show you, but the background is that. Um, if you will need to um, publish, you decide to, to go ahead and, and publish the game on our platform, you will need to fill in the GPP. Um, it's basically a concept of your application. It stands for Global Product Proposal. Um, it's not something that our group will approve or reject. It's something that we track but it's not gonna, we're not going to give you an answer like we don't want your game or things like that. It's entirely up to you. Um, what we will need the GPP for is also uh, in any discussion related to dev kit loan because we are going to evaluate the GPP and then possibly come back with deals or discussions about having to uh, loan a dev kit. Um, the GPP um, is a fairly quick stage. Once that stage will be over, you'll be able to then receive the product code of your game and start actual development on the, on the platform. Um, you will need a product code for a number of things, uh, requesting services, um, enabling trophies, network, things like that. So that is an essential step that you will need. You can still start developing without the network features and all of that, but this is fairly important. Um, at the moment, unfortunately, uh, you will receive one product code per region. Um, you will not need to fill the GPP for all regions because no, you will need it to do once, uh, but you will receive three different product codes for the three different regions that we are divided into. Um, level five is something that everyone loves again. Um, you will need to have your game uh, rated by a rating agency and by rating agency for Europe, we mean Peggy. Um, depending on where you are planning to publish your game, you might need to submit it to a different rating boards because in Europe we love to have a million rating boards. Um, and all the details on this are listed on tpr.net on our portal. Um, we are aware that there is another way of certifying games um, that is fairly straightforward, uh, but we are still implementing it, it's taking longer. Um, in terms of Unity specific um, things that you can get on our platform, you can get a Unity license to develop for, for PS4 for free. Um, currently is mainly PS4 development, however if you're shipping on PS3 and PS Vita then we can combine the things and give you license also for Vita and PS3. Um, in order to obtain one license you need to raise a DevNet thread and some of our guys will just give you the access to the, to the Unity build. Um, you can also access specific Unity support, and this is available on DevNet. There is a forum available to you. There are also paid for options if you need one from Unity. And obviously, it's all listed in the amazing FAQ that is on top of the forum, um, the Unity forum. Um, just to le let you know that Unity releases for PlayStation are essentially in line with all other platforms. Um, Uni like I said, PlayStation add-on is made available on DevNet on the Unity forum. Uh, the only thing we kindly ask you is to make sure that the PS4 SDK version is in line with the version of Unity that you are currently using. And all of this, like I said, there are plenty of notes on DevNet, uh, plenty of articles you can read which SDK version is required, which Unity version is currently supported and all of that. Um, after you've done all of this, uh, you're ready to start the, the fun, um, the debug, <laughs> the develop and debug, everything is ready. You can now run your game on the dev kit um, and dedicate yourself to the amazing and sublime art of debugging. Um, remember, as always, that we can help. We have an entire group that is looking after support. So there isn't a, a question that is too small or too stupid to answer to. Come on DevNet, we are, we are there, we are happy to help.
And like I said, there is an entire group that is looking after this. Um, if your game is running on PC, which we all hope, uh, you're already in a good spot because developing on PS4 is fairly straightforward from PC build. Um, we provide also a number of tools to connect to your dev kit from PC. We provide profiling tools. Um, if possible, uh, our suggestion is to make sure you have some knowledge or someone in your team that with knowledge of C++ as you might be required for some tweaking on your side. Um, as always, like I said before, we're still always there. Um, don't be afraid of ask for support. If you need anything, come talk to us. Um, it's just a post on DevNet. We are going to respond to you. Um, and we are actually here for this reason. So after you've done all the fun stuff, which is a develop and debug and make sure that the game actually run, is the funnest part, which is test. I know that um, testing is always amazingly fun. Um, make sure to test your game as much as possible. I know that it sounds like patronizing, and of course I'm going to test my game. But the reason why is that um, we lower, we shift the focus from functionality testing that we were doing years ago into uh, our own side things that I'll show you later. Uh, therefore, it's important that the game has been tested from functionality-wise directly by you or by your testing team or whoever is behind the game. Um, when we say functionality, test anything from crashes, from things that can annoy the user, whatever it is. Um, like I said, crashes are weird issues and make sure to do it again and again and again because it's beneficial for both you, the user base, and us in QA. Um, obviously, it's up to you. You can rely on external QA teams to do this. Um, they're probably going to be a fee for it. Uh, there are plenty of studios out there. Um, however, based on our experience, don't be uh, afraid too much of this part of the, the development cycle. Uh, you can do it all in-house. We have plenty of examples that have done all the testing, all the QA done directly by the dev team guys. Um, in terms of the next level, is, is more about customizing. Um, we know that there is loads of content, loads of new games that come every month or every week on the platform. Um, the only suggestion we can give is essentially what you might expect. Make your game unique, make it stand up against the rest. Um, one thing that we notice is the feedback from um, user uh, communities that um, is about trophies unlock. Many games don't present any challenge at all with trophies. They just put it there for fun, uh, but it's not really fun. So um, what we suggest is to make your trophy system a bit unique, a bit, car a bit uh, tailored to the actual game experience rather than having some very bad, bad things that we see around. Um, again, anything that you need from us, just speak to us. We can, you can speak with the tech guys, you can speak with the business guys. We always have plenty of stats, suggestions, design, whatever it is. You can always talk to us. Um, this is the perfect spot to start thinking about it, make a trailer of your game. You will need to make a trailer of your game for a later stage of the journey. Uh, but this is where you should start thinking about it, to not leave it as the last second thing, and then it might take longer than you think. Um, you will need also to start drawing up all the metadata that you need for the store submission, which means long description. It means all the info that you write on the store page of your game. Um, start to create assets, which basically means a screenshot, video, um, description, and all of that because the, you will need to submit all of that to us before the release of the game. Um, another thing that you might have heard of are our TRC, which are the technical requirement checklist, which is essentially what QA will be testing your game against. Um, TRC is a list of requirements that are related to the platform. Uh, we cover a variety of subjects that I will show later. Um, it's what we use in QA. Like I said, we don't test functionality anymore. Obviously, um, if something weird happens, we're going to report it, but it's not our focus. Our focus is just the technical requirement. Um, compliance, we will be testing uh, for all these subjects that they look a lot, but they're not. Um, mostly, 
compatibility, naming convention, business policy, security, all the things you might expect from our platform. Um, in terms of uh, TSC, we, we highlighted the most common issues that we found on uh, Unity-based games. Um, it's a, it, this list that will follow is taken from actual uh, Unity games submitted to us. Um, <coughs> many TRCs are already handled by the Unity engine, but not all of them, otherwise it was too easy. Um, <laughs> so here we go. Um, the one that we found that is the most um, painful and causing problems is um, before using any online features, we ask you to call a specific API that we provide to you. Um, and this is in order to ensure that uh, we are legally compliant towards underage users. Um, therefore, it's a very serious requirement for us because it involves a bunch of lawyers and legal and EU laws and all that amazing thing. Um, but I'm fairly certain that after this, everything will be clear and no one will fail it anymore. Um, essentially, what we ask is that when you have a natural feature, uh, you call the API. API is going to give you either true or false. If it's true, everyone is happy, and the user can go and play online. And obviously, if it's false, you block the user access to the online part of the game. Um, it sounds extremely easy, but it's one of the biggest uh, problems that we have right now is compliance to this rule. Um, Obviously, our API will return a result that is based on what you put as the minimum age to play online. So the, that, um, that value is input by you, and the API will cross-reference based on PSN account information. Um, based on this result, as I said, the application must allow or deny access to the uh, network side of things. And by network, I mean all network, like online multiplayer or online leaderboard, whatever is online must be blocked. Um, another thing that, um, like I said before, unfortunately, is not very taken into account is the trophies must be unlocked via gameplay only. No viral trophies, such as play with the developer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and unlock this trophy. Um, and not unlock the title screen trophy uh, that we saw. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was. Um, but yes, to creativity and a bit of challenge, because no one wants to unlock a trophy just by loading the game, because it's a bit lame. Um, and we also don't allow uh, trophies to be unlocked um, immediately after loading the save data. That's a security um, issue, so we don't allow that. Um, in terms of other things that might happen in your game and not cover specifically by the Unity engine, uh, is a uh, user must be made aware of network errors. Pass, part of the network errors are system handle, part are not, so you will have to come up with some creative message. Uh, we don't have a set of messages, because otherwise, like I said, it's too easy. Um, <laughs> so you will need to <laughs> come with a bit of creativity to say to, to alert the user. Um, um, also, please make sure to use our latest publishing tool. Uh, it's unrelated to the SDK, so we can release publishing tools separated from the SDK cycle but you will not need to touch the code at all. It's just the tool that you use to actually package the game. Um, make sure also to well, um, pay attention to the um, branding and naming convention guidelines. I know that is very easy to say, but it is a massive cause of failure because misspelling or whatever can be. And yeah. Um, as a side note, I don't work for Sony for PowerPoint skill. I work for, so they hire me for other reason, but you know, it's, yeah. Um, so after you've done all of this, um, you get to the final stage, um, which is the QA submission. Um, so what we suggest before reaching the final stage is make sure to have a proper version of Unity. Um, by proper, I mean the one without the watermark, because that's an instant rejection in QA. In order to do that, raise the uh, waiver request, um, sorry, the DevNet request, and we're going to give you a specific version that you can use for submission that we remove the watermark. Um, before submitting, test it another time. You never know. <laughs> you might find some late stuff. Um, what you need to do when you are super ready to submit is uh, to book a slot on FQA web, which is connected to our TPR portal. Uh, you will book a slot, and QA will know that at that day, they will start testing your game. 
Um, our QA will take five calendar days uh, to test your application, so they work pretty much every day, including Saturday, Sunday. Um, we will be only testing against the TRC, like I said before, we will not be testing functionality issues. Again, if the game keeps crashing, then we probably report it, but it's not the main focus. Um, and also, you will be able to check whatever we report in the live bug database that uh, is available, so you will be able to see in real time what gets flagged against your game um, and check the bugs. Um, if you will fail your submission, as you probably expect, uh, um, make sure to address the bugs found <laughs> before the submitting. Um, for any clarification and any questions you might have ab um, about any bug that have been raised against your game, again, come on DevNet, talk to us. We're happy to help and clarify whatever we can. Um, once you will be ready, you can rebook another slot and go through another round. Um, don't worry. It is essentially very, very common to fail the first time the round of certification. It's, it's a new area for many developers. You have not seen any of the TRC. It's fairly common to just fail it for a number of reasons. Um, the bugs raised by our QA guys will be um, fairly uh, clear and will point you in the right direction. Again, if you have any questions about those bugs or you can't reproduce or whatever it is, you can talk to us, you can talk to the QA guys. We are open to discussions. Um, so <laughs> the strategy to go through this, um, like I say, we, I, I can't stress enough on how important it is to actually communicate to us. Um, either your, via your account manager, or if you don't speak with him, <laughs> then come directly on DevNet. Uh, we are there. Uh, we are ready and happy to help. And every resubmission obviously takes, again, five calendar days. So every submission cycle is five calendar days. Um, the game will still be fully retested uh, from one submission to another. And because of this, make sure to plan ahead uh, your release schedule to not find yourself at the very last second to have to deal with another resubmission. Um, and also, like I said, talk to us as much as possible during this stage because we are very happy to help. Um, another thing that we always uh, um, speak about is the fact that our QA also provides addi additional services you might need or you might not need. Uh, but they are available. The first one is the TRC sweep, and it's basically a, right, a quick run through the TRC based on your build. Your build can be either um, close to completion or can be a bit early stage, and you can pass through this. Um, or you can do an actual pre-master submission, and basically it will be an actual submission based on the build that you sent to QA. Obviously, these are paid for services, so if you want a better result, you might want to send the pre-master submission, which is extremely close to the final release or the final build of your game. After you pass a mission, you won, um, you, you, you pass the last stage. Um, again, don't let the rumors uh, kill your mood. Uh, we are not that bad in submission, we are kind of helpful. Um, we work closely with the QA guys, so whatever communication goes to them, pass through us and the other way around. So whatever doubt or issues you have and you speak with them, make sure that we are also in the loop and we all usually are. Um, as an epilogue, <laughs> as, the, as the final uh, journey is towards the publishing thing uh, is getting closer, um, don't forget to uh, provide the metadata of your game that you, I'm sure you already have ready um, is because there is a, a turnaround time to get this metadata approved and before um, this, the game actually will go on the store uh, this needs to be approved is about a week um, turnaround time uh, in addition to this based on the country you want to publish your game on uh, there are some language requirements based on the long descriptions so on the description of your game uh, some store might require localization of the text some others are fine with English only. Um, all the guides are on the, on the portal. Um, once the metadata assets, uh, trailer, whatever else is left uh, has been approved, your game is ready to go in uh, five business day on the store. And the hype is is at that point is real. Um, in terms of what we suggest um, to do, especially for new, for, uh, new developers, 
um, is to be open with your audience, interact with them. Um, another thing we suggest is to use our live area for your game. Live area is basically when you see the game on the PS4, all the different tabs that you have around the game. You can have a tab linking directly to your game for DLCs. You can have a, a tab linking for um, leaderboard, whatever you want. Um, obviously, tweet and generate interest in your game. Is your game you want more as many people as possible to play with it. Um, you can talk to us about release window. Uh, we can suggest, obviously, we're not going to mandate a release window for you, but we can suggest you which release window would work probably better for your title. Um, have a point of reference with your audience means have an email, have somewhere that the audience can contact you for whatever things happen in game. Um, and also we suggest to enrich the application for uh, using PlayStation specific features, light bar, DualShock 4 speakers, sharing and streaming interactions. Um, the more you use these specific things, the better is the end result with users. Um, don't be afraid, <laughs> uh, don't, uh, um, don't pull back. Um, creativity from user side is always appreciated. Uh, you are the creator, the product is entirely yours. We will never step in on your product. Uh, but if we need any sort of help or any discussion from business or non-business side, we're there to help. And that's the dragon of the presentation. And, <laughs> and that's it for me.